I just recorded this video and then realized I forgot to hit record. So, take two. Hey guys, this is Mandy Schimmelfenig and I am the author of The Rise of River Stone. It's my debut historical fantasy novel that follows Laria as she navigates an evil regime as a servant. It is the book one in my Daughters of Riverstone series. Book two is slated to release next year at the time of filming this, hopefully. Today it's chapter 11 and we're talking about knights. Knights in shiny armor. Sometimes they're real jerks. So what did it take to become a knight in medieval times? Well, it starts at age seven. I don't know about you guys, but I can't picture any of my kids at age of seven being able to be responsible enough to tie their shoes correctly. And usually they were serving their father or an uncle, another relative that was already a knight, or it could have been a stranger. It was an opportunity for young boys, especially if they were of lower ranking in society to kind of raise their status. But also keep in mind that a lot of times you couldn't even start unless you were of noble status. So it kind of depends on your world as well, what the rules are as far as class. At age 12, their advanced training would start and then they would be called a squire. They would become a knight through acts of combat, chivalry, heroism, all of those good things. Once a knight became a knight, he fought for a lord and he also usually received his own land um, as well. Now, knightly conduct. It is very important, especially when it comes to your perception of a knight. What do we think of? We think of loyalty, respect, protection, and honorability. These are all important for Rister in the Rise of Riverstone. Even though he's kind of the bad guy, it is still important for him that his knights and soldiers who are trained under the knights act with a certain sense of you know, honorable conduct because it also reflects poorly on his lord if the knights aren't behaving themselves. A knight who distinguishes himself above and beyond in the world of Riverstone is also called the first knight and he served specifically as the right hand of the king. He was the numero uno. He also had his own estate and a high level of respectability. This estate, like Riverstone, usually had a lot of tenants. And when you're the first knight, that means you were the boss of all the other knights and soldiers. Laria's father was the first knight of the usurped king. Ristard is the first knight of the evil king. Another knight you want to keep your eye on is Olam, Rister's young protege. So make sure you keep an eye on him in the Rise of Riverstone. If you want to see how important the role of knight plays in the role Rise of Riverstone, please check it out on Amazon.com. You can also pick it up on Barnes & Noble, Powell's, IndieBound, wherever books are sold. But if you order through RiverstoneSaga.com, you will receive a signed paperback and some exclusive gift swag. Book two, again, I'm hoping next year. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for updates on the release of book two. See you next